Right, so now we're going to see how to run an explicit dynamic analysis, which would be appropriate for things like impact uh, with contacts and things like that. Um, so we go to project and then I have open answers. Uh, I went to project and I will choose explicit dynamics and create one a new project. I uh, will go to engineering data and I will edit. <clears throat> so I go to engineering data sources. I will wait for it for a little bit. <clears throat> and it should soon be enabled. I will choose explicit materials and then I will add the materials that I plan to use in my simulation. So in this case, for this example, I'll be using some nylon. So these are the properties. And these are default materials that are already in ANSYS. And we'll be using default materials for this example, but you can add materials as well if they're not included. Um, so I will add this and I will also add some concrete. <clears throat> I will choose this one and add it here. And now I told the software what kind of materials I want to use for my analysis. I will now close that, go back to project, and then I'm going to import my geometry. So I'm going to import my geometry using new design modeler. And I'm going to wait for it to open. So I'm going to make sure the units are in millimeters and I'm going to import an external geometry. I'm going to import a head and an obstacle. This is not um, press generate. So this is just a rough mannequin. This is not a validated head form. You, there, there are those available. But for this example, you're using just a, a rough mannequin. Um, right, so this is far away from the obstacles. If I'm going to run a simulation where the head hits the obstacle, I probably want to move the head as close as possible if I'm putting an initial velocity, uh, because nothing is happening until it hits. Um, and, and if I don't move it closer, it's going to be calculated in every step. So uh, it's a waste of computational. Um, power. So I'm going to choose translate. I'm going to choose the body. And then I want coordinates. I want to move it by 30 millimeters on the other side. So minus 30 millimeters. Yeah, it's close. Maybe um, oh. minus thirty five. Yeah, that's close enough. Right. So I got my geometry and I'm going to go out. And then I go in model. I open that and I wait for it to load. Right. 
that. And I have my model here. Um, so I have my two geometries. I'm going to find some materials. And instead of structural steel, I'm going to assign nylon to the head. Now, nylon nylon head doesn't act as a human head. Um, but for this example, we, we're going to put nylon. But the mass is, is pretty much uh, the same. And for the obstacle, I'm going to put concrete. Um, I want to make a mesh. We'll use the default mesh settings. And I'm going to put some initial conditions. So I'm going to put some velocity. The units, let's just check the units. Yeah, it's millimeters. Um, so the units are millimeters, kilograms, newtons, and all that. ANSYS is dimensionless, so you just have to be in a consistent unit system. So I'm going to put 9,000 millimeters per second, which is 9 meters per second, or rather minus 9,000 millimeters per second because of the sign and the direction. Um, I'm going to put some boundary conditions. So I want some fix support. I'm going to choose a surface and choose this surface right here. Apply. Right. Um, I'm going to go to analysis settings. I have to set an end time. So for how long is it going to run? And I'm going to put um, so for units at seconds. So I'm going to put 0 0.05 seconds. Um, then for this solution, I want to put some outputs. So what is it actually going to give me at the end? So I want some stress. I'm going to also add a force reaction. So I'm going to go to solution information, insert force reaction. I'm going to choose geometry selection. And then I'm going to choose this face from the block. And then in orientation, I'm going to request for total. And I'm going to solve. My results. I also added um, I added an acceleration probe and an equivalent stress uh, to the solution information. Um, and now I can see what is happening for my model. So I get the results here. I see the peak in acceleration where I placed my um, probe and this is the reaction force on the obstacle so you see a peak here this is typical of an impact and and this peak can be very important so when you would want to protect something um, you might want to get that peak down and spread that curve uh, so the energy is dissipated uh, over a longer period of time, so you, you, you don't get this spike, so you would prefer something that comes like this.